Hi there, in this video we'll be looking at using Ionic 4, which is in very, very early alpha, with Angular 1.6. So you may have seen my video of using Ionic 4 with Vue.js, and if you haven't, I would definitely recommend you check that out here on the channel. But today we'll be looking at doing the same thing with Angular 1.6. So let's make a new Ionic Angular application, and that's going to be done by making a new directory called Ionic Angular 1.6. We can cd into ionic-angular1.6 and inside of here we can start off by making a new file called index.html and that's of course where we're going to set up our html page and import all of our scripts. As well as that I also want to make a user.module.js, a user.controller.js and a user.service.js. After that, we can open this up inside of our editor. And at the same time, we can also run HTTP server on this directory. If you haven't installed this, use npm install HTTP server dash G, and that will allow us to run this application here in the browser. So let's start out at index.html and I'm going to use Emmet to scaffold a new HTML page. If you haven't used Emmet before or you aren't well versed with it, don't forget to check out my Emmet video here on the channel. So after that, we have a standard HTML document. I'm going to change the title to Ionic Angular 1.x. And as we've already created our three files, I want to import them using script source. We'll import the user module.js and it's important that we give it the type of module. This is going to allow us to import JavaScript modules and this will only be available in later versions of Chrome and other browsers. I'm not saying you should necessarily use this for production at this point, but what we're doing is because we're not using a build step right now, we're simply using type module so we can use the import syntax. I'd recommend using something like TypeScript or Babel if you are going to use this in production, but Ionic 4 is in very, very early alpha, so I wouldn't bother using it in production just yet. The next thing is to import the Angular script and the Ionic script. Let's start off by importing Angular. And after that, we need to import Ionic core. Once we have imported both of these scripts, I would recommend checking the JavaScript console just to ensure we have no errors at this point. Doesn't look like we do, so we can continue with our application. What I'm then going to do is add ng-app equal to user app, and that's what we're going to call this application. So this essentially allows us to use Angular inside of our HTML page. Awesome, so what I'm going to do now is start backwards at the user service. So instead of using the module first, we're going to create the service. That can be done by exporting a default class, and I'll call this the user service. And this user service needs to use HTTP. So what we have to do is inject this by saying user service dot dollar inject and we'll want to inject $HTTP into this service. Now, if you are using Angular 1.x in production, there are other things that you can use at this point, which will take care of this injection, but for now, we'll just do it like this. We'll then get a reference to this inside of our constructor, and we'll assign this.http equal to that HTTP that we've injected. Therefore, at this point, we can create a new get function, which will return this.http.get, and we'll use the JSON placeholder.typecode.com, 
slash users for some dummy data. And then when we get that, we'll simply return the response.data. That's all our user service needs to do at this point. We can then head over to our user.controller.js. And at this point, we can export a default class named user controller. We can follow the same principles as before with the injection, but this time I want to inject the user service. And that's the service that we just created. And we can then of course create a new constructor which passes in that user service and we can assign this.userService equal to the user service that we've injected. We can then create a get users function and that will say this.userService.get and after that has completed we can pass the users to this.people and we'll subsequently show this.people on screen. So we may want to assign this.people equal to an empty array. And after that, we can say this.getUsers. We could certainly design this controller much better, but for now that will do. And we can head over to our user.module.js. Finally, in here we can just import our user controller from user.controller.js and our user service from userservice.js and then here we can set up our angular module we want to call this module user app we want to pass through nothing so essentially we're just instantiating a new module for our controller we want to call this the user controller and pass through the user controller that we imported and finally, for our factory, I want to call this the user service and we'll pass through the user service that we imported. Finally, with all of our logic in place, we can create a simple user interface which uses the Ionic UI components. I'm just going to do this inside of the body tag at this point in time. So we'll have an Ion app, which will have an Ion page. Inside of our page, we'll have an iron header with a toolbar inside of the header and a title inside of the toolbar. This title will be Ionic 4 plus Angular 1.6 and we'll also give the ion page the class of show page. Next, we'll have some ion content inside of the ion content. We'll have an ion list and we'll do a list of items by using ng repeat on the list of items. So we'll say p in, and at this point, we need to access that people variable. So in order to do that, I'm going to assign the ng controller on of our body as the user controller as VM. So then we can say p in vm dot people. Therefore, inside of our item, we can have an ion label with p dot name as the label. Looks like I've accidentally ended the ion page a bit early. So let's move that down to underneath the ion content. And when we refresh our page, you can then see that we now have this Ionic Angular application. We've gotten some people from an API. We're displaying a user bar at the top here, which has the title of Ionic 4 and Angular 1.6. We're using an Ionic list to display these items with the Ion item and Ion label inside of that list. So this Angular 1.6 application does leave a lot of things to be desired. There's many things which you could change to improve, but this is supposed to be a rough and ready application that gets us up and running with Ionic 4 and Angular 1.6. I hope already you can see just how versatile Ionic 4 is going to be with Stencil. It's going to allow us to upgrade our old Ionic 1.x projects much easier than simply writing a new Ionic 2 plus application.
There's also a small percentage of organizations that can't support Angular 4.x and have to be on Angular 1.x but also want to use the power of Ionic. We may find that in the future, Ionic 4 is a great upgrade strategy for those people. If you found this video useful, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated. And don't forget to check out paulhalliday.io for more premium courses and content. Until next time, I'll see you very soon in that next video.